here's what the fucking amazing thing is when you start building healthy habits. You take them everywhere. Yeah. It's like it's like they exist all the time, right? So just because I go on vacation or I go somewhere else doesn't mean I let all my healthy habits go to shit mm -hmm. um, and forget that I still need to drink water. I mm -hmm. still need to fucking move my body. I still need to sleep. Yeah. You know, things like that. So it's like, just stick to the basics. Enjoy yourself. There's no need to go off the rails and fucking binge, -y, in my opinion. Yes. Um, you know, just because you're in an all inclusive doesn't give you a fucking free ticket to eat like an asshole Think or drink like, like an asshole either. Right. 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 That's what exactly. happens at all inclusives. You eat all you want. You fucking drink all you want. You gorge yourself you yeah. by the pool feeling like shit because you did those things. Right. And then you're like, I fucked everything up. So the whole vacation is you just pissed off. And you just drink yourself to death and eat yourself through the roof. So let's just not go that route. A yeah. And you're going to be totally fine. Welcome to Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt, the world's number one no bullshit health and fitness podcast. Are you ready to cut the crap with your diet and exercise, get strong as fuck and build a healthy relationship with food? Then you've come to the right place. Let's, let's go. go. If you'd like to support us in the podcast, join our Patreon where you get exclusive content, which consists of monthly workouts you can do at home or at the gym, monthly challenges that are either strength, habit, or mindset based, and access to over 100 plus low calorie, high protein, family friendly meals. These are all designed by a professional chef who is certified in nutrition. These recipes are already in my fitness pal for easy fucking tracking. New recipes are also added each week. We believe that fitness is for everyone. So this is our way of getting you started on your health and fitness journey at a price most everyone can afford. So what the fuck are you waiting for? We'll see you in the Patreon. All right, Beth. Hi. Long time no talk. You've been a busy little bee over there. Busy little bee. So have you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what have you been up to? Well, today consisted of taking a body fat percentage test at seven in the morning. Oh. For my coach, Christy, because, she, you know, we love data, which okay. is amazing because my my weight has been like stable or, mm -hmm. you know, to people that are looking at it or I know people are following me on this. It may seem like nothing's happening. Oh, my God. Right. But no, I lost almost 2% body fat. Fuck yeah, but, but your weight hasn't really changed that much. That's no. precisely what we talk about a exactly. lot. Exactly. Right? The scale not changing, but shit's happening. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and here's two people that get so frustrated about the the scale. That's why you need to have, have so much data. Like you're you're focusing on something that honestly doesn't tell the whole story. Yep. I so. did a video the other day about that about how the scale fluctuates, but I, I did a little experiment, right? I drank, I drank a, a chugged glass of water and then showed how I gained almost a pound afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then I sit, stitched that same video the next day and I, and my weight had dropped six pounds from one day to the next. It's yeah. because the day before or the two days before I had eaten pizza. So my scale weight jumped up, but then it dropped back down after a day, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was just showing that to, to people like, guys, like we need to look at this like fucking rational adults here. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's for sure. Yeah. So yeah. I did that. Then I went, took my son to the pediatrician and then I got him a haircut. I kept him out of school, went grocery shopping, got gas. It was one of those days. And then here I am now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I feel you there. Uh, it, yeah. what, what method did you use to test your body fat? Was that like a DEXA scan? Or? Um, an in-body scan. So where I, scan, used to, okay. where I used to coach at a hybrid fitness, they've had, um, had this since I started the gym there. So I have yep. data since when I first started my journey, which is Phenomenal. crazy. So I have, I'm able to like, look back and like 2020, when I did like the real intense cut that I did with RP, mm -hmm. I've, I'm looking back at my old in bodies and I was at like 13.2% body fat. I'm like, holy shit. You got down right. to 13% body yeah, fat? Yeah. Well, that's according to this. It's probably, you know, a lot, There's a, a little bit higher, but it was yeah. very low. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for a woman. That's like, I, I know 20 is pretty lean for a woman. Yeah. Yeah. What are you right now? If you don't mind me asking. I'm at 18.7. Uh, Beautiful. Hell yeah, Beth. You're fucking crushing it, Nerdle. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Admittedly, it feels like fucking so slow, right? Right. Like I can relate to all these people. I understand that you think that maybe it's not working. You just keep going. You just keep fucking going. And this is where people usually quit because they're yeah. focusing on that scale. And realistically, so. too, I mean, at your body weight and your fitness level and your experience level, you yeah. don't have a lot of weight that you can realistically fucking no, lose. no, exactly it goes back to that's, realistic expectations. That's why when people ask me my starting weight, it's like, you know, that really doesn't uh, in this case, it doesn't kind of really matter. Yeah, for sure. You know, and anyway. if you have a lot of weight to lose, sure, it matters. But like, right, your, your experience and everything. I'm going for body fat loss here. Yep, for sure. 
Yeah, I just got back from uh, my little weekend adventure doing some hiking at Indiana Dunes National Park. That was fun. Yeah, I gotta nice. tell you, like those little climbs of those sand dunes, they're a couple hundred feet elevation climb at a, like a 40 degree grade. Those are fucking intense. It's like it's sand is brutal. It is. So it's there was brutal. there was this woman sprinting up and down. She'd sprint up, walk down, sprint up. I'm like, this fucking woman is a fucking badass. Like, damn. I, like, I kind of wanted to join her, you know, but I had right. like 13 people. I wasn't going to be that guy. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going I'm to do some, uh, real quick? Yeah. some real shit over here. <laughs> but um, it's, it's literally, I was reading about it and it's like, you take it's walking through the sand, hiking through a stand, the sand like that on an incline. You, it's literally taking two steps forward and one step back. That's what it's like. So yeah. I imagine was, like, like that's like Marine style training. It really is. Shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Water yeah. training and sand training. That's what yeah. um, professional athletes do in the off season. They train in the sand for agility and quickness mm-hmm. and explosiveness. Uh, when we were climbing the one, was, we were literally doing like lunges the entire way up, you know, big wow. steps, lunging up and, and, and continuing forward. So fucking functional fitness guys, functional. Fitness. Yeah. yeah. Did you do this barefoot? So funny, funny about that is the first one, um, we climbed in boots, uh, hiking boots. And I was like, fuck this, this is too hard. So I just went barefoot after that. Mm-hmm. It was, I mean, just connecting with the earth like that just felt so much better too. In between. Yeah. Grounding. Yeah. Grounding mm-hmm. yourself for sure. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Ground yourself, connect with nature. Yes. It's the best or, vitamin N vitamin. Let's get N. it. Let's fucking get it. So Beth, what are we doing today? We are doing an Instagram anonymous Q and a yay. We, we love, love these. these. Fuck yeah, we do. <laughs> Fucking punch buggy, you're it. Okay. <laughs> and yes, we love these. Everybody listening seems to love them too. These mm-hmm. episodes pretty do pretty well for us, and we love fucking helping people. So yeah, let's get right into it. What do you think? Let's go. All right. How are you feeling today? Well, that's okay. a very nice question. Thank yeah. you to ask that. Yeah. I feel pretty fucking good. I feel I don't know accomplished. Good. <laughs> that, I mean, what what has you feeling uh... accomplished? Uh, it feels good to be growing my business and doing what I fucking love. And mm. it's just, everything's like coming to fruition, I guess the All word is, right? Sometimes I, I sit back recently and I'm like, wow, look, at, look at what we're doing. Like, even like with the podcast, it's like fucking insane that we've been in the top 10, top five. We've been sitting there. Sitting for there. a That's, fucking we're, we're, while. We're the fuck in. We're, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's like our new spot, which is yeah. so, um, I'm, I feel very grateful these so days. Grateful. Like a good word. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a perfect word for that, which that aligns with our 30 days of thankfulness that we're doing or what, however many days are in our, uh, November 30, right? 30. Mm-hmm. Um, our 30 days of thankfulness we're doing uh, for our Patreon members. Yeah. That's been um, cool to see. Yeah. I mean, the feedback's been great there too. Everybody's mm-hmm. crushing it there. Um, I'm feeling good myself. Um, yesterday I was feeling anytime I come back from a trip, even though I was only gone for two days, I just get so overwhelmed when I come back and get back to work because mm-hmm. as business owners, we're we are we're always working. And so when I do take intentional time off like that, the work doesn't stop. And we yeah. business still needs to run and things like that. So it's like, oh, getting back to work, there's always a lot of anxiety. Like, I can't wait to get back to work. And that's a good mm-hmm. thing. But yeah. yeah, I feel good today though. Good. Oh, yeah. I figured I was like, my, my nerdle friend hasn't been giving me my, my what's up, nerdle morning, <laughs> morning hellos. Yeah. What's up, you <laughs> dirty bitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, So I have a good l- little introduction here too. It says, you a homie. Wasn't a question, but it just says, you a homie. So you a homie. I appreciate all, that. All right, homie. I fucking appreciate that. I try to be, <laughs> I'm a real one. Like real recognizes real. So thank you. <laughs> All right, we got Homie. some softballs out of the way there. Let's let's get a question. All right, going. this is a great question, and always I like answering this one. Can you gain muscle while being in a calorie deficit? Okay, yes. so yeah. So it, it's here's the thing, right? There's so many analogies you can use with this. It's this like, definitely requires nuance. If you're a newbie, or you haven't strength trained in a very long time, you know, yeah, less than a year, um, right? I would say you can definitely, definitely gain muscle while in a calorie deficit. Absolutely, mm-hmm. but there's going to be come a point where you're going to need to eat more to gain more muscle. So from an efficiency standpoint, yeah, yeah. Your body needs is going to be requiring more energy to build. build that muscle. Yeah. So yes, you can. Is it optimal um, as time goes on? No. Mm-hmm. Right. The longer you've been training, the more advanced you become in your training 
And the more muscle you put on, the harder it's going to be. Now, yeah. building muscle relies on two things. It's a signal. So you need to have the appropriate stimulus for it. So you need to stress your muscle in a way that encourages it to grow. And it also requires energy, food, mm -hmm. calories, protein. So, so really protein. So, so if you're going to try to build cal uh, muscle in a calorie deficit, first of all, don't be in an aggressive calorie deficit and then make sure you are getting a lot of protein. You need to be on a high protein yes. diet, but then at some point you're going to have to stop trying to do both because you're going to be spinning your wheels after a certain point. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to go into intentional build and cut phases, yeah. which is what you've been doing. Which, you know, like me, I have been doing this on and off, right? Like two years I was at maintenance, um, slight surplus for sure. And, you know, I strength train hard at that point, I'm building muscle, right? Yep. Because mm -hmm. I've already it's been years of doing this now. Um, right. And now I'm in another fat loss phase. So you don't have to do like what I'm doing. I'm in the fitness world here. This is, right. you know, right. it, not everyone does shit like this. Yep. Well said, Beth. Well said, Beth. So my question kind of to build off of or to, to bring things back from the last question, actually, is what the hell is calorie deficit? Oh, so I, I love that. Let's, let's break this down. Let's simplify it, but also add a little bit of nuance to it, too. So a calorie deficit is at its very basic term. It's bringing in fewer calories than you need to maintain your body mass every single day. And when that happens, you lose weight because your body runs off of energy. It needs energy to maintain. That's what food is. Food. So calories are energy. Yeah, calories are energy. It's calorie is a unit of measurement for energy. So understanding that our body runs off of energy, then if you're not bringing in enough energy to maintain its body mass, you're going to lose fat or, or you're going to lose body mass. And hopefully it's fat if you're doing it right. Right. Um, so it's going to use your fat storages to run, essentially. Now, the calorie deficit doesn't mean to starve yourself because that's what we right. see a lot. People see calorie deficit like, oh, cool, I'll just do uh, 800 calories a day or 1,000 calories a day. But yeah, that's a calorie deficit, but that's not smart and that's mm -hmm. not sustainable. And it's going to introduce more problems down the road than, than benefits. And calorie deficit doesn't mean tracking calories. I think, Ooh, we, thank you know, you. just that's because you're tracking calories doesn't mean you're in a fucking calorie deficit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so when somebody tells us like, Oh, I'm tracking calories and I'm in a calorie deficit, but I'm not losing fat. Well, I'm sorry, but you're not. Okay. Like you just right. said, counting calories is not the calorie deficit. And that's one thing we hear so much uh, on social media from a lot of um, more holistic based coaches right. and things like that. Like oh, uh, calorie deficit, we can't count calories forever. Like nobody fucking said anything about counting calories. Right, right. I lost fat earlier this year without counting a single fucking calorie. You know, yep. it's possible. It's just a, yeah surplus or deficit of energy is, is right. really all it is. And to have some nuance to this, a calorie deficit does work for everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if you're going through menopause, even if you have hormonal issues, even if you have PCOS, so on and so forth, insulin resistance, those things impact the calories out equation and even the calories in equation, because your body's not as efficient at metabolizing the food that you're bringing into your body. So those things can make getting into a calorie deficit more difficult, mm -hmm. but a calorie deficit is still how you will lose fat. Yeah. So if you lose fat with any of those situations, conditions, I don't care what you were doing, what you were doing led to you being into a calorie deficit. I don't care if that meant you were eating nothing but whole foods or if you were intermittent fasting, if you were doing keto, if you were monitoring mm -hmm. your blood sugar, that those are all tools to get you into a calorie deficit. But the calorie deficit is the mechanism at which fat loss occurs. Yes, and it's not a diet. And it's like, not you're, a fucking diet. You're not diet. going into a calorie deficit diet. You're not doing the calorie deficit diet. Calorie deficit is what's happening it's a natural physiological uh, process. In that's the what human we, exactly. It's not like I'm doing paleo or fucking keto. You're not that's doing, cal you're not doing calorie deficit. Okay. You're going into a calorie deficit. So you're creating the you diet it's energy because balance. you are not no longer doing fat diets. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Energy right. balance, homeostasis. That's all. Exactly. Right. Homie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, homie. All right, homie. What's next? For Christmas, I'm going to three weeks in Mexico. That sounds nice. Yeah. Um, vacations are, uh, it's all inclusive. I am very worried all my progress will be lost. Okay. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Yeah. First I, off, it's vacation, right? Yeah. I think um, if you're, you've been building healthy habits, here's, here's what the fucking amazing thing is when you start building healthy habits. You take them everywhere. 
Yeah. It's like, it's like they exist all the time, right? So just because I go on vacation or I go somewhere else doesn't mean I let all my healthy habits go to shit mm -hmm. um, and forget that I still need to drink water. I mm -hmm. still need to fucking move my body. I still need to sleep. Yeah. You know, things like that. So it's like, just stick to the basics. Enjoy yourself. There's no need to go off the rails and fucking binge eat, in my opinion. Yes. Um, you know, just because you're in an all inclusive doesn't give you a fucking free ticket to eat like an asshole Think or drink like, like an asshole either. Right. 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 That's what exactly. happens at all inclusives. You eat all you want. You fucking drink all you want. You gorge yourself yeah. by the pool feeling like shit because you did those things. Right. And then you're like, I fucked everything up. So the whole vacation is you just pissed off and you just drink yourself to death and eat yourself through the roof. So let's just not go that route. Yeah. And you're going to be totally fine. Yeah. Wham, going, get your movement in. Get your movement you in. Know? Go, go walk the fucking beach. I'm assuming you're going to Mexico. I mean, you're going to be on yeah. a beachside resort. Go walk the beach in the morning. Go walk the beach. Watch the fucking sunset. Mm -hmm. um, guess what, Beth? I haven't told anybody this yet, but I'm going to Mexico in January for, for a week. Um, so I'm going to be in the same boat. I'm going to an all-inclusive. Um, mm -hmm. So here's some advice that I'll give in terms of nutrition. You're going to have so many good food options at an all-inclusive. All yeah. of your meals are going to be catered. They're going to have buffet style food and all that stuff. Fill up on protein in the morning. Get a, eat a high protein diet in the morning with fiber. Have some of those foods that you like. Don't have 10 mimosas. Maybe if you just want to have a little drink, have a mimosa. Don't turn it into an all day bender and just enjoy yourself. It's at, at the end of the day, three weeks, we want you to enjoy yourself. So if we're focused on building habits year round, it really shouldn't be an issue. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, I spent five weeks in Florida last winter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically that was kind of, I was still working, but to me, it's kind of like a vacation. I was at the beach, you know, yeah. I brought my healthy habits there with me. I ate, and I ate out pretty much every night and I maintained my fucking weight. We're in this for a um, lifestyle change. That this is, that, that's the thing. I walked every day. I walked mm -hmm. the beach every single fucking day. That's what you do. We walk. And that's, that's why we, <laughs> we preach, we, we, we preach about building these healthy habits, because if right. you don't have that foundation, then yeah, I would be a little bit worried too. Yeah, foundation. Especially walk. for for three weeks, but you're good. Don't stress. Have fun. Have fun with it. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, Matt, you're next. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've got a coaching question. We can both talk about our coaching here really quickly. How does your coaching work? Is it group or individual? What is your main focus, or is that individualized? So myself, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching. The one-on-one -on -one coaching is absolutely individualized to each individual depending on what you need help with, what you're struggling with, where you've been. If you've been in a lifelong diet or we need to approach things a little differently, work on the mindset. So everything is individualized with our one-on-one -on -one coaching. The group coaching is not necessarily individualized because it's hard to um, individualize that, that many people at, at one time. But it's, it's a structured format for mindful eating where we take you through the basics over a 12-week period, teaching you the basics of mindful eating, helping you you know deal with emotional stress eating and building up those foundations, which is what we've been talking about here in this episode is building those foundations. And mindful eating is a really good opportunity to, to practice that when you're on vacation uh, for three weeks, mm -hmm. for example, because you're not going to mm -hmm. be tracking calories on vacation. Hopefully not. Right. Yeah. What about you, Beth? It's the same as Matt, yeah. except, <laughs> uh, pretty, you know, literally one-on-one -on -one is the same, right? Mm -hmm. Group coaching is different though. Um, that's where we... Um, yeah, that's our differences there. Mine is in Facebook. You know, it's fat loss, muscle building kind of focus. So yeah. I help give you, I have guides in the group that I created that you walk through to create a calorie deficit, a protein goal, how to build a healthy plate. We have Zoom coaching calls twice a week. We have a workout portal for you to workouts at home or at the gym, recipes, daily accountability. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the difference. Yeah. So our like structure is very similar for group coaching. It's just a different focus point, really. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. On that note too, I want to, I don't know if people realize this, but we don't actually coach together. We, mm -hmm. this is a common qu a question we get a lot is yeah. we have our own separate coaching businesses. I was actually, I was on call just the other day, like, oh, I actually just had a call with Beth's team too. I was like, oh, cool. Like you can't go wrong with either. I don't like yeah. oh, work with Beth, work with me. Um, That's cool. We're, yeah. That's we're what Hunter these, said yeah, yeah, the other day. He's like, I talked to someone that's, that's going to you and Matt to see you. Which one they want to go. Yeah. I was like, that's that's pretty cool. I don't care. Like either yeah. one. Yeah. We all we're all here to support you. So yeah. Get the help you need. All right. Okay. So um, how do you measure out your protein to hit your goal? I thought that if you are having chicken, for example, and you measure 40 grams of it, then you're getting 40 grams of protein. Oh. Is that right? Mm, nope. Nope. Uh, maybe I'm overcomplicating it. Love you guys. Okay. Yeah, no, 40 grams of chicken doesn't mean you're getting 40 grams of protein. 
So you have to look behind the label when you're tracking to see how much protein is it per gram. So if you're getting 40 grams of protein, it could be maybe like four gram or 40 grams of chicken. It may be four grams of protein. I don't know. I'm just throwing numbers out there. I just checked it. It's 11 grams of protein for per 40 grams of protein. So. so what it weighs is not the macronutrient amount. Right. Yeah, because it's not just the, the chicken doesn't isn't just protein. It, there's water right. in there. There's there's fats in there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's not just pure protein. That's that's a good question, though. I like that. Yeah, good question. But you're not overcomplicating it. You're just you didn't know. Mm, exactly. Exactly. OK, cool. Uh, next question. Is it true that if you took a walk slash movement, even a short one, that it will help your blood sugar stabilize after meals? And I fucking love this question. Mm. This just really goes to show you the power of fucking walks and movement. Yeah. The answer to this is yes. Yeah. Going on a walk post meal has been proven time and time again to help manage your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. Go for a 10 minute walk after a meal and you're going to stabilize your blood sugar. You're going to help aid digestion. You're going to feel better. You're getting some movement. You're getting some mm -hmm. fresh air. And guess what? If you eat three meals a day, you do that. Just do that twice. That's 10, 20 minutes of walking or do it after each meal, 30 minutes of walking. You just met your fucking cardio requirements right there. Mm -hmm. it's like classic habit stacking right there. Yeah. We're, we're taking something we're already doing. Everybody eats. Everybody eats. Okay. So habit mm -hmm. stacking is adding a new habit onto something that's already established as a habit. Yeah. So, when I eat, then I go on a walk. That is a classic habit stack. And that is a really mm -hmm. great way of going after your health and fitness goals. Yeah. Love it. That's a love. I love that question. Really good. Yeah. That's a good one. All right. How long after quitting drinking did it take for you to quit craving alcohol? It's mm -hmm. been eight weeks for me and I still think about drinking almost every day. Gosh, it's been seven years and I know the beginning was real. The first year is rough and I'm not going to fucking lie. I think the most important thing is for you to get some kind of support system. I don't care what it is. Maybe it's online. Maybe it's AA. Maybe it's just something and hang out with people are, that are kind of like in the same path as you. It helps to have people that support you can group. talk to about this shit because it could be like a possible trip to like saying fuck it yeah. because it's that easy to do. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying that, yeah, it's very normal, but support is is very key, especially in the beginning. For the first year, I had a ton of support. And then I was like, okay, yeah, I feel so much better. You know, it's it's very new for you still. Mm -hmm. It's okay to ask for help. I, the physical cravings aren't there anymore for you, but it's right now you're having like that mental craving because it's it's more of like a thinking disease than anything. There you go. It's yeah. A, yeah. Don't so. underestimate, underestimate the power of a solid support system. If you don't have one, there are so many great resources online. Yeah. You can join Beth's community and her, her Facebook group. Um, go listen to our podcast with Celeste that we did for some help there. So yeah, for sure. Great question. All right. So my question is, how come some days I have so much energy during my workout and some days I feel like I'm dragging every second? So this is a uh. question that is, there's like a lot of things that to consider, but kind of normal. It is, it is kind of normal. Sometimes <laughs> like, you're just not going to be feeling it. Sometimes you're going to be dragging dick uh, yeah. in the sand, you know? It's like, yeah, absolutely. But also we can look at a few things too. We, we need to understand, first and foremost, that some days you're just going to feel off. You're going to be tired. You're going to be sluggish. That's the reality. So we need to accept that. Um, radical acceptance there. Let's practice that. But also we can look at things like our, our daily routines the day before. How much energy did we bring in? Did we eat? Did we fuel our, our body appropriately? Did we get enough carbohydrates the day before? And, and, you know, the carbohydrates that are more complex. So you've got that more sustained energy. Um, did you fuel your body uh, appropriately before your workout? Um, you know, did you have a, at least one meal in your system before your workout a few hours before? What was your sleep like the night before or the, or the couple of nights before? Your hydration can impact your energy levels during your workout. If you're dehydrated, you're going to be dragging ass. Your muscles aren't mm -hmm. going to be as efficient. You're not going to have the energy. Stress is another big one, too. If you're more stressed than normal, that can absolutely impact that as well. So there's some variables to consider there. Yeah. All right. Okay. This question is funny. Um, why do you pronounce Parmesan so funny? Parmesan or instead of Parmesan or like... Is it Parmesan? It's Parmesan. I've, I I I don't know. I think I've heard it pronounced both ways. I think it's probably just a regional know. thing. Where the hell you grew up at? Like in my region, we call it Parmesan. Yeah, I so I call it Parmesan. Yeah, I don't know. We're not the, but... We are not, we are not the vocal. It may be raisers. funny to you, but it's just how I talk. Yeah. So I, I never <laughs> yeah. thought of it being funny, but it's okay. like um, Midwesterners <laughs> saying "oh" and, <laughs> and right. 
It's just uh, people like down south, they say y'all. It's just, I mean. Some you know, people call sneakers tennis shoes. Tomato, I mean, tomato, potato, potato. So. <laughs> Gold jacket, green jacket. Who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah. All right, Matt. I got this question and I'm not sure if you'll answer it because of your calorie deficit and stuff, but I'm, they say, how tall are you? So I'm six foot. And I know a lot of people try to ask these questions to tr- figure out how many calories you, you, they should be eating compared to you and things like that. I've so gotten that question that so many there. fucking times. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you guys focus on yourself. Who cares how fucking tall we are? Yeah. I'm I mean, tall really. enough to party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Well, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> tall enough to party, bro. That's all that matters. I didn't know there was a, a height limit to partying, Matt. <laughs> There, there is um, no. Okay. Tips for getting out of a recipe rut. Find new fucking recipes. I'm scared. Join our um, Patreon. I, yes. Oh my God. That's a great idea. Yeah. Join our Patreon. We have like a hundred plus recipes, three new added each week. There you go. Or in the interest of not being biased, join um, Zach Cohen's Patreon. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I, don't, I don't care. Join both. Join both. You get fucking- both. Yeah, he does, he, he does like the meal prep uh, uh, recipes. So if you're more interested in like the meal prep way to go, like definitely you could check that out. But yeah, mm-hmm. lots, of, lots of options out there. This is a, a quick question. Your celeb crush. And I don't know. I don't have a celebrity crush. I, if I'm being honest, I don't fucking pay attention to celebrities. I've got my own shit to worry about. Like recently with that scandal with Adam Levine and Maroon 5. I'm like, who the fuck cares? Like, oh, my God, it's yeah. not worshiping celebrities. I don't don't fucking care. I don't care. I lived in LA. I hung out with a lot of them. They're just people. They're just people. Just fucking people. They're just fucking people. I have bigger things to worry about. Yeah, totally. All right. How do I increase my protein in every meal without eating more chicken, salmon, or ground meat? Okay. (laughs) It's so funny because a lot of people think that protein is just meat. Yeah. There's so much more to protein than just fucking meat. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have eggs, we have cottage cheese, we have Greek yogurt, we have light string cheese, we have edamame, we have tofu, we have satan. Fuck. Yep. There's there's protein and a lot of well, chickpeas, anything yes. in the legume family, which then you're getting some really good fucking fiber too, especially like with the edamame, you're getting some some fiber mm-hmm. in there as well. So, you know, best of both worlds there. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's plant-based options out there as well. And um, you don't have to do one or the other, you know, just eating uh, animal protein, you get the complete amino acid profile, which is what you need to build muscle. Yeah. Um, and also like, a little harder. get creative with cooking your meats. I mean, season that shit. I make, I eat the same kind of meat a lot, but mm-hmm. it's always seasoned differently, differently. Mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Was the question different protein sources or how to get more? Because in terms of how to get more, you could literally what I what I see with clients and and you know DMs and things like that is they might be eating protein, but it's such a small portion, like one yeah. ounce or two ounces of protein, um, and then it's quadruple the times amounts for carbs. Like double double up your protein uh, options. You know, two pieces of lunch meat. Put on like four pieces of lunch. Right. Meat, doubled your protein right there. So yeah, maybe she's, how do I increase my protein in every meal without eating more ground chicken? Okay. So, oh, okay. Okay. So in that case, like I, if I have a salad, I add tuna, but then I also add cottage cheese. Okay. So then, and then I have like Parmesan. So then that's like three sources of protein on there. That's not just tuna. Yeah. You could or, add something like those edamames that, edamame that you were talking about earlier. Like yeah. Getting, like some dry roasted edamame, get a little crunch on your salad. You're getting a protein boost there. You know, get a high protein bread and have that Bolt, with your, breads, your yeah. sandwich. This is a great thing to actually, actually teach people how to do. Instead of just having protein oatmeal, right? You're going to need to add something like eggs on the side of that protein oatmeal like the protein oatmeal at 10 grams is more of a carbohydrate than it just it's fucking oatmeal with protein in it so if or add let's a scoop say, of protein to it yeah so if you let's say you're having eggs have some oatmeal with protein in it on the side yeah our meals really like vary your meals add a lot of different textures colors mm-hmm. protein sources you know pair things up get creative experiment with what works and what you like You'll, you'll learn a lot about yourself. That's the thing. Like I, I wasn't perfect in the beginning and it took me a lot of trial and error to get my meals and my protein up. And yeah. now I have a lot of fun making my meals because I know uh, how to get my protein in now, but I wasn't always, you know, fucking stellar cook at this macro shit. Yes. It takes practice. It does. Yeah. It takes, exactly. 
when you move away from dieting and having rules and structure and rigidity to your meals and your life, you don't know what to do. It takes a, it takes like we we love following rules, but we love breaking rules too, which is why diets don't work mm-hmm. for many people. So learning to do things for yourself, it's a lot more difficult, but it's so I'm, fucking rewarding. I'm finding a lot of people are struggling with that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, are, I feel, and I'm going to just put this out there, that you guys want things handed to you. It's an unfortunate thing because you don't learn anything that way. We're here to show you where to look, right? Give you like, and but we can't, we shouldn't be telling you what to see. Yeah. Um, that doesn't teach you anything. Right. You have to be willing to put the fucking work in to figure out what's going to work for you instead of me saying, okay, Karen, I think you should have um, three eggs. Okay. Two slices of turkey bacon. Uh, but you know, you don't want me telling you that. Okay. Because you might not want that. That's what I like. And, and you I might think hate being told what to do. I you have do. to find out what you like. I can give yeah. you tons of recipes. Hmm. It's up to you to choose which ones you want or like. Yeah. The age old saying, if a man is hungry, you can give them fish or you can teach him how to fish, right? Yeah. The easy way out for the person that needs the food would be to give them the fish. But guess what? Now they're going to need to keep coming back to you for more fish. Mm -hmm. Or you can teach them how to fucking fish. It's going to take longer. It's going to be a little bit more frustrating. Going to need to practice some fucking patience and consistency. But now you know how to feed yourself. Yes. And that's so important. you know how to thrive and survive. It's so important. And that's how you learn. That's how you learn. Having someone tell you what to do, to, you're not really learning anything. You that's why you we don't, don't kind of that way. absorb that information. Yep. I just went on a tangent, but that needed to be said. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. So next question. Stopped dieting 18 months ago, lifting weights consistently, scales up eight pounds. By definition, am I in a surplus? I'm thinking about a calorie deficit to reveal muscle. I like this question. So by definition, yes, you have been, I would say you have been in a calorie maintenance, or a, a calorie maintenance surplus, slash, slash surplus. I think yeah. maybe even maintenance unless like, uh, because your weight can fluctuate, but unless it's been steadily going up. Right. Um, I yeah. know you can be in maintenance like of like 10 pounds. Because eight pounds over the course of 18 months of ga- that's, uh, gaining that's that much. That's a very, 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 very low small calorie yeah. surplus. Very, but which it's possible. So I I would say you were probably in some sort of a uh, calorie surplus the majority of the time. It was probably just very, very small, which Mm -hmm. that's honestly how muscle building works and how gaining weight works. I think that's great. It's the opposite of a calorie deficit, slow and sustained. So Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And I love that they said, I'm thinking about a calorie deficit to reveal reveal muscle. Hell yeah. I mean, if that's what a goal of yours, like absolutely go for that. You can reveal Mm -hmm. the muscle. Take the the blanket off of the um, statue that you've been building, right? Like, look at what mm-hmm. I've been doing for the last eighteen months. Now I'm just time to show off my muscle that I that I know I have under here. Let's see what I've got, and that's kind of what you've yeah. been doing, Beth. Because yeah, you, went, you were on a build for a long time, for most part of this year. And, yeah, you know, it's like now it's time to show what you've been doing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right, your turn. All right, what are the benefits of reducing cardio during a reverse diet? Current cardio, 12,000 plus steps a day and 60 minutes of zone two a week. That's a good amount of cardio. All a reverse diet is, all it is, okay? This is not some magical thing. It's just increasing your calories to hit maintenance. And you could do that by not even going into a a reverse diet or just going straight to maintenance. Right. Um, right. I think like, A, getting that many steps a day is is amazing. Um, I want to ask like, what is your goal here? Why are you in a reverse diet? There's so many things I can, I feel like I can ask with this question. Like, why are you in a reverse diet? Why are you doing so much cardio? What is your fucking goal? So you think that's a lot of cardio then? Or because I mean, 12,000 plus, that's a lot. Uh, yeah, that's a that's lot of a steps high, a day. That's a very active, steps. that's active, yeah. very oh, yeah. active. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but you and I probably average that. I have to really fucking focus to get Oh, that do much. you really? Okay. Oh yeah. I mean, but yeah, I get 10,000 plus a day, but it's never over 12 I unless get- it's the weekends. I get 10,000. And when I did my fat loss phase earlier this year, that was Mm -hmm. actually one of the only changes I made was I increased it to 12,000 because I increased my um, energy output. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would just ask, I mean, um, 60 minutes of zone two, I guess that's not, that's not too bad. Right. That's what I was looking at was the 60 minutes of zone two. I think I'm more concerned about like, why are you doing reverse diet and why are you what are the benefits of reducing cardio? I want, I would want to know why you'd want to even know that because are you doing that much cardio for a specific reason? Right. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, 
Yeah. I mean, benefits of reducing cardio. If you're, if you are doing a lot of cardio, your body's not going to be as stressed. It adapts. It adapts to cardio. So yeah, it does adapt to cardio, meaning you're going to have to do more and more um, in order to get the same benefits. Effects. Yeah. So if you're killing yourself with cardio, definitely that just allows your body to change. And actually I've got a client um, that I've been working with for a couple of months now. She's a chronic over-exerciser for so long. And it got to the point where it's been ruling her life. Yeah. Um, And that was the first thing we did was we dropped the amount of time she was in the gym from six days a week of strength training down to four. And she was working out also two or three times a day, sometimes doing Mm. hit classes and things like that. So that was a very clear case of you are doing way too fucking much. Yeah. Um, And now that we've, you know, within the first couple of weeks, she, she got it like really quickly, like how, how great she was feeling, how her body's changing her, you know, and, and things like that. So yeah, you're not going to be as stressed. Your body's not going to be as beat up and, and inflamed if you are killing yourself with cardio when, when you right. reduce that. Yep. All right. So uh, this question says, I have not used protein powder before. What is a good protein powder to start with? Also, are there any out there that you can buy in a smaller size? So what is a good protein powder to start with? Well, Beth has turned me on to first form. I like the first form protein powders. I also in the past have liked the optimum nutrition protein powders. Honestly, the type of protein powder to me, I don't fucking care. Um, yeah. Get you know, get a protein powder that doesn't make you feel like shit. You know, whey versus a soy based or plant based or something, uh, or or casein or something. So ultimately, it doesn't matter. I would just say find something, find a protein powder that is trustworthy, that is reputable, that is independently third party tested for the quality. Because some of the lower quality, the least expensive powders aren't really made with the greatest materials. And there's a lot of like there's been some supplement companies that have been shown to have metal shavings and shit Mm -hmm. in, in their protein powders. So just be wary of that. So check things like examine.com and reputable sources for that um, websites for reviews of that stuff. Um, And I've seen protein powders as little as one pound containers, anything smaller than that. I don't know if I've seen, because then you're getting into just like prepackaged protein shake territory. Yeah. Yeah. And cheaper too. I noticed that they don't mix well, they don't cook well, um, they taste grainy. So sometimes it does pay to pay. Yep. Yeah. I wish first form had samples, but they don't or smaller. There you go. Um, all right. Is it necessary to intermittent fast? Will I gain weight if I stop? Ooh, no, it is. Okay. It is not uh, fucking not necessary, necessary at all fast. at fucking all this. This intermittent fasting is thrown around like like it's freaking the the second coming of it's Jesus or some shit. Every ailment um, in the world and it's not. Yeah. Hate to break it to you. The current research shows us that there really isn't any unique benefits to intermittent fasting versus any other way of eating. Not even for autophagy. Okay. That's a common claim is autophagy, the body's ability to regenerate its cells and Mm -hmm. and build and things like that. You do that when you're sleeping naturally anyway. You do that in a calorie deficit. If that's your goal is to lose fat with intermittent fasting, guess what? Your, your body will go into autophagy in a calorie deficit, even if you're not intermittently fasting. It'll do it when you're fucking sleeping. You're fasting when you're sleeping as it is. Yeah, I'm sorry. Was there a second part to that question? Oh, will, nope. will they gain weight if they stop? Yeah. You could. So here's the thing about intermittent fasting is it's just a tool to limit how often you're eating. By doing that, you're limiting how much you eat. So if you don't know how to eat without having that restriction of time-based feeding, then yeah, you could potentially gain weight because you're just going to be eating more food, being in a calorie surplus. Mm -hmm. Not saying you're going to necessarily, but it's a very real possibility if you don't know how to eat. Yeah. All right. So this one I had to look up. This one says, thoughts on the seller sizer in addition to weights to tone up and get some definition in legs. I'm a 42 year old mom. So, do, do you know what a seller seller sizer is? I gotta look that shit I, up now. I had to look it up. It's a tra- it's essentially a trampoline. So the trampoline isn't going to do fuck all to help you tone up and get definition in your legs. What a trampoline uh, is great for is cardio, getting some solid movement in. So if you enjoy jumping on the trampoline and using the seller sizer for quality movement then go for it. Just understand that it's not going to help you build definition in your legs because in order to do that, you need to be 
breaking down the muscle tissue. And a trampoline isn't going to do that because there's no resistance and you're not stressing it out. And also toning up, because they did say in addition to weights to tone up, the weights will help you build muscle definition for sure. But let's talk about toning up really quickly because this is what I want to actually talk about. Toning is bullshit. It's a fucking marketing term. Yeah. You can't tone anything. I just did a video about this. You and I've done a video about this. Um, you can't tone. Mm -hmm. You're not a fucking printer. Period. Okay. You can grow a muscle. Your muscles can shrink. Your fat cells can expand and your fat cells can shrink. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is what, to get that toned look that you're going for, it's reducing your body fats to show the muscle that you have. And if you don't have yeah. muscle and you just start going into the calorie deficit and try to get toned, you're just going to get that skinny fat look because you don't have any muscle to fill out your frame. Right. So I guess you could say I'm, I'm going for the toned look right now. You absolutely are. <laughs> you absolutely are. <laughs> but <laughs> so I've been muscle building or in maintenance, lifting heavy. Do you have you guys ever heard me say I'm I'm going I'm I'm getting tone right now? No, right? <laughs> Why is that? So, <laughs> no. Because that <laughs> I'm revealing muscle. So I'm going to have more muscle definition. That is what it's called. And why will I have more muscle definition? Because of fat loss. Okay. Oh, man. All right. So that was your question, right? Yep. Okay. Best fiber supplement or how to increase your daily intake of fiber, please. I love this question because fiber is so important. So fucking important. So, so important. important. What do we got? What do we got? Um, so how to increase your fiber? Berries, avocado, oatmeal, like whole grains. Whole grains. Uh, Legumes. Let's, legumes. What else has fiber? Gosh, so many and things. Most vegetable. Um, I mean, vegetables, you know, fiber, yeah, all, vegetables. Um, most all vegetables. Yeah. Like I said, fruits, apples, pears, like everything in this, their skin form whole mm -hmm. um, is better because you want yeah. that bulk. The bulk is important because that's what's going. This is for your colon health, you guys. Mm -hmm. So the rise in colon cancer. Why do you think this is happening? Because we're not getting enough fucking fiber. Yeah. Well, Recommended for yeah. women is, a, I believe, 25 to 35 grams even. It is. Men is like 35 to 45 grams a day. And why is it different? Because men are typically bigger than women. Yeah. There, there's a, um, a calculation there for every like 1,000 calories that you bring in a day, you should mm -hmm. get X amount of fiber. And that's the difference between guys because guys just naturally need more calories to maintain their body. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a high percentage amount of people that don't meet the recommended amount of daily fiber intake. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best things you can do to improve your overall health. In increasing your fiber intake can help manage your cholesterol, your blood sugar. Um, it can help your blood pressure, your intestinal health, gut microbiome, and it can help keep you regular. You know, if you're shit in water, eat some fiber, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's different forms of fiber. There's insoluble and there's soluble fiber. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. Eat a very diet. Lots you of colors. You want to mix your both chia seeds, or chaya. How the fuck do you say these things? Chia, chaya, chia, 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 chia. Okay. Chia, yeah. <laughs> chia, <laughs> chia seeds are great. They are sprinkle. You can sprinkle those on your yogurt, on oatmeal, flax seeds. Flax you know? seeds. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right. What's your opinion on meal replacement shakes for convenience? I'm not a big fan of not meal replacement fan. shakes in general. But in a pinch, like if you're on like going on a road trip um, or if you're going to be, um, you know, hours with between meals and you know you're going to be hungry, you can take the proactive approach and get a protein shake. That's when I'm a fan of doing things like protein shakes. But I'm not a big fan of using meal replacement shakes because, first of all, they're not going to satisfy you. What's going to yeah. happen is you're going to have the protein shake and like, oh, cool, I'm eating so healthy. I'm skip I'm having a protein shake for a meal. Right. But then later on down at, at night, you're going to be fucking ravenous and you're going to eat a thousand calories more than you would have if you just ate a fucking meal. If I had a meal replacement shake right now in my calorie deficit, I would be fucking starving. I would right? lose my shit. Like that would be unbearable for me, to be honest. I couldn't yeah. do it. I need I need a big ass meal. Big ass meal, especially. I want to chew so that shit. I want to feel the fullness in my belly. I do not want to drink a fucking shake and be so unsatisfied with my with, mm -hmm. oh with my life. god. Beth, speaking of chewing, you, that's a great point. You're not chewing a protein shake. Guess what? You're not expending energy to break down that protein. It's just going straight into your body. Mm -hmm. Chewing your food expends energy. So by eating food, you're burning more fucking calories than you would if you drank a protein shake. Yeah. Yeah. And there's actually yeah. research to show too. The act of chewing, it's actually a, a stress relief. Some, some chemicals get released. It's the mm -hmm. happy hormones and things like that. So when you chew, it makes you feel better. Hence so. why eating is actually, uh, like you just said, eating is a parasympathetic response. So this is why emotional eating, stress eating, mm -hmm. um, because eating is a calming 
yep. situation. So I actually yep. learned that from Casey. There you go. Casey Joe. Yes. Episode 39, I think she did with us, which is a fucking phenomenal episode. Mm -hmm. uh, all or nothing thinking. Yeah. Next, when making a homemade chili or meal like chili, yep. how do you calculate your macros and serving? You make a recipe. As much as it may be a pain in your fucking ass, you make a recipe. And that's easy. Once you do it, then the recipe's in there forever. Mm -hmm. And how you figure out the different servings is how many servings are in your total recipe that you made. Usually they have that on the internet, like yeah. this serve six. So, so yeah. you make your recipe, you weigh the whole entire thing at the end, and then you divide the total number of grams on the scale by six or however many servings. And that's how you figure out. And then the app will divide the macros for you. Right. So let's say so. your chili has five ingredients. You would take mm -hmm. each individual ingredient, total up how many calories and protein and all the macros those individual ingredients have. And then you'd add them all together. And then you take the pot of chili and divide that by however many servings you're going to put in there. And there's your individual breakdown per meal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. I have one more question about coaching, actually. Could I go through your coaching program more than once if I felt I needed that? You certainly could. But our goal, if you're working with us, especially in our one-on-one -on -one coaching, is we want to get you to a spot where you don't really need another coach. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to help. We Our job is to equip you with the skills and the tools, the emotional tool belts and the mindset and everything that you need to handle any situation on your own. Whether, yeah. you know, if your goal is fat loss, we take you through a fat loss phase. Ideally, then we'll take you into a maintenance phase and teach you how to maintain your results. And then, you know, if you want to talk about going into a surplus and another deficit down the road, if you need to, but our, our job as coaches is to teach you what you need. So you don't need another coach or us again, but if you needed to reaffirm some things, or if you want to work on some different things, absolutely. You can, we, yeah. we can go through coaching with us once again. Absolutely. We're not going to tell you no. Right. But we will, we will say, is there something lacking in our program where that we didn't teach you, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Probably one or two more it's, questions. Yeah. I think we'll have this one be the last one or you, oh, this one and the next one, one. Okay. Is it possible to ingest too much protein? No, no. We're good. With the caveat, um, well, of course, if, if you have pre existing kidney issues, of course, check with your doctor. Right. But no. What is the episode with Alan Aragon? 49. Listen to episode number 49 of Cut the Crap right. because Alan Aragon talks about that. He actually wrote an article about muscle protein synthesis and the protein amounts, like meal timing with protein, all that stuff, you know, as a lot of it's really overcomplicated or people overcomplicate it. Just get, it's the total amount of protein during your day is what matters most. And most people, it would be very hard to eat too much protein. And there's obviously it's so hard to overeat on protein. You know, I mean, <laughs> you would be stuffed. So full. So you would be stuffed. miserably full to you guys can barely get 60 fucking grams of protein. I can't imagine you guys trying to get four five hundred grams of protein. I mean, right. that's yeah. just unrealistic, really. Yeah. All right. All One right. more question, Mia. Um, I don't want to waste too much time on looking through questions. So are you a backseat driver? <laughs> No, I'm not a backseat driver because first of all, I'm usually driving, um, especially mm -hmm. on long road trips. Um, I don't mind driving 12 plus hours if I need to, but I don't want people to fucking backseat drive me. So I'm not going to do it to them. This goes back right. to kindergarten. Treat others how you want to be treated. If you don't want people to bitch about your driving, don't fucking bitch about their driving. Yeah, I don't backseat drive either. Unless my husband driving like a complete psycho because he can do that. <laughs> Unless you're blatantly doing something wrong or going to crash. Uh, he or likes hurt to somebody. like pass people on main roads with me and my son in the car. And I'm like, like going fucking 80. I'm like, you know, please just do this shit on your own. I don't want to be in the front seat of your that's massive well, that's fucking truck safety. with our son doing safety, this shit. So, yeah. you, you know, but he's, he's a really good driver, but he just does shit like that. And that kind of irritates me. Yeah. But other than that, I don't say shit. I have a lead foot too. So yeah, I, I, I'm not used to having passengers in my car. So when I do, and I'm like <laughs> throwing them around the car on accident because I'm, I'm breaking hard and I'm starting hard and, and right. tur taking turns too fast, but yeah. So breaking maybe, bad over there. Maybe don't drive with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Beth, you've drove with, dro driven with you're me. You're not bad. Driving. It didn't scare me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Your driving's fine too. So. <laughs> oh yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah. We took turns when we were in Maine together, actually driving. Off yeah, the we did. So, yeah. 
All right. Yes, indeed. Um, okay, that, y'all. You got your last question in then, right? So awesome. Mm-hmm. That was a really good episode. Lots, lots of fun. Lots of good questions, lots you guys. Of, lots of good questions. We fucking love them. You guys let us know if you like, I mean, obviously you guys like these, but if you want more of these episodes, we will do more of them. We are here to help. We are yes. absolutely here to help. Okay. You tell us what you want to hear and we'll fucking do it. Yeah, absolutely. Have All right, y'all. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this episode, so why not share it with a friend who needs to hear it? Send us a DM on Instagram or email us at cutthecrappod at gmail.com and join our Patreon at patreon.com slash cutthecrappodcast. As always, we appreciate you and thanks for being here.